we look at human in, in, in humans, and do we see that it's overexpressed in people who live longer? So we've developed an assay for human in <clears throat> that we can measure in plasma. And we've measured it in probably over two dozen cohorts by now. And there are multiple observations related to human, human in levels in people. Uh, perhaps the most fun fact is that centenarian families have higher human in levels. Uh, and they're uh, near Barzillai, collect centenarians. They have, uh, you know, close to thousands of them. And their children have substantially higher levels than age match controls. And they themselves have substantially high human in levels. Human in levels are associated with a reduced high human in levels versus low human in levels. So it was re reduced risk of endothelial dysfunction risk of heart disease, cardiac fibrosis, um, and, and several other conditions, as well as predicting Alzheimer's disease risk, both in plasma and in CSF. Um, so there's definitely evidence that uh, high human levels are beneficial for health span and low human levels are not. MOTC levels, we've also uh, demonstrated to be, uh, and this is much earlier, we've only been measuring that for the last three or four years. Uh, MOTC levels are associated, first of all, of course, with exercise, but also with uh, uh, quite possibly uh, obesity, diabetes, and frailty, uh, but the results of that require uh, additional validation. Schlep 2 levels mm -hmm. are associated with a, uh, high Schlep 2 levels see up here to protect you from cancer. And we looked only uh, at a small set of patients and controls with early prostate cancer. And men uh, with high Schlep 2 levels are much less likely to be diagnosed with prostate cancer. And men with low Schlep 2 levels have an increased risk. One of the things about the levels of mitochondrial microproteins is that there's a lot of ethnic specific effects. And looking at groups like Hispanics, African Americans, Asians, and whites, we see differences in differences in the uh, relationship between the levels and the disease risk. A curious observation about MOTC is that um, Caucasians exercise, their MOTC levels go up. In a study that we uh, performed with a group uh, uh, at Harvard, uh, uh, in women who had breast cancer, uh, and one of the best things you can do if you had any sort of cancer is to adopt a serious exercise program. Mm -hmm. I think that's well recognized. And that investigator put uh, a group of women on uh, an exercise regimen after the diagnosis. You, uh, women of European extraction raised their MOTC levels in response to exercise, as we've previously observed. But Hispanic women, even though they clearly were actually exercising, showed no change in MOTC levels in response to exercise. We don't have a clear explanation for this yet, but mitochondrial DNA is much more ethnic specific. And the variations that I mentioned, the mutations in Schmooz and Matsi and Numenin and in other peptides uh, are ethno-specific. And there might be other mutations that we haven't yet recognized that control the regulation of these peptides, for example, in response to exercise. So it's a complex field. Uh, have you looked at how human in and, and MOTC impact uh, cancer? So we have published uh, on cancer and human in uh, a couple of few papers and other groups have as well. And it appears that human in reduces uh, cancer progression and cancer metastasis uh, in animal models and uh, low human levels 
are also associated with increased risk of developing cancer. Low human levels correlate with high IGF levels. Mm -hmm. So is that the explanation? Is human in and IGF sort of opposite regulators of cancer? It's not totally clear, but there is some suggestion that that's part of the story. There's also a possibility that human is a modulator of immune function, uh, and that's how it's involved. Uh, MOTC has yet to be published in the cancer context, but my colleague David Lee, who co-discovered MOTC in my lab, has a program looking at MOTC as a regulator of cancer biology and immune function as well. And I think uh, the association of mitochondrial dysfunction and cancer development is well recognized. And whether you can ameliorate that or correct that with intervention with mitochondrial peptide is an exciting concept. Uh, my lab has some very early leads on other peptides that might be involved in cancer and might be potential cancer treatment. There is a, a peptide we have not published yet that we call NOSH that we think is going to be exciting in the cancer arena. Um, and there are other peptides that are very early in the discovery pipeline that seem to modulate cancer biology. We think that raising IGF-1 lowers human in. I mean, that, that's like the cause and the effect. To some degree, but uh, what we've shown is that in both humans and animals that are given growth hormone or IGF-1, human is suppressed. And then in situations where IGF-1 is suppressed, human in levels goes up. Mm -hmm. And both cases are like fairly obvious thing. You know, we know diet is good associated with high IGF-1, uh, 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 high human and low IGF-1. Diets that are bad have high IGF-1 and low human in. Now, so it all fits in that sense. Right. And the same thing, exercise is good. It's associated with higher MOTC levels and less cancer and so on. Okay, and humanin goes down with age, is what we found. It, it, does MOTC also go down? Yes. Uh, uh, the degree to which, you know, the, the slope of the decline is different for different mitochondrial peptides, but most of the mitochondrial peptides that we have developed reliable assays for seem to show an age-related decline. So humanin, MOTC, and SHLEP2 are all age-dependent. Uh, they also have some subtle differences between men and women uh, and their differences by ethnicity. Right. So do we see a change? Like when you get to 65, it's around 65, I think. It's like you need to eat That would be me. <laughs> okay. It'll be me soon too. Um, do you, you, you see a kind of a, requ a larger requirement for protein, I believe. So Correct. do we see that? In your diet. In your diet, yeah, yeah. So, do do we see that there's like a a change in terms of the trade off between human and an IGF one after sixty five? I don't know that we have the data to answer that question. I think there's always a trade off, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, human in um, has many benefits, but when we created a human in transgenic mouse, for example, the mouse has fewer progeny. Uh, they don't grow to the same degree. The mice are smaller mm. than standard mice, perhaps because of the balance between human in and IGF-1. These mice have a lot of human in. We think we have evidence that they're protected from a number of uh, diseases and conditions. But there's always a trade-off, and the trade-off is in part related to the IGF system 